Hey guys, I'm Dakota Graff. I'm, today I'm here with Leaderboard. Um, I'm the green buyer for Onyx Coffee Lab. Um, in the past, I've been a barista competitor. Uh, also competed in uh, SIGS competition and uh, took fifth place in Leaderboard last season. And uh, today I'm gonna walk you through a deep dive on coffee varieties. So at the top, I wanna go ahead and talk about uh, screen size separation, because that's a big red herring in uh, in identifying coffee varieties from a physical as aspect. So I'm gonna grab some screen sizes to kind of show you on a dry mill level. Generally, you're gonna be working within screen size 15, 16, which will really have a fairly small seed, which can really affect identifying varieties from a physical aspect. So we like to rely on taste as much as we can but I'll show you a couple varieties today uh, just so we can get a little deep dive and I'll talk about how those varieties translate from physical to the cup. So I'm gonna start with our Castillo variety. Now Castillo tends to be like a medium sized variety. It's gonna be slightly round in shape and the cup quality tends to be fairly balanced acidity, uh, decent body, and generally they're lower grown in Central and South America is when you're gonna find them the most. And they have, uh, they tend to have a peppery note and uh, pretty balanced sweetness. So they're pretty easy to pick out because of that lower acidity and those pepper notes. But again, they could be processed in a few different ways to bring up a little bit more acidity and a little bit more more balance to them. So that's Castillo. I also want to walk through a Bourbon variety. So that'll be really similar to a Castillo variety in flavor and in physical attributes. Uh, one thing for me that sort of Bourbon has that like Castillo or Keturah doesn't have is like a really, really juicy texture and really nice flavor clarity. So this one is a Bourbon variety from Peru. Now, this tends to be a little bit bigger than what I've encountered in, in Central and South America. Uh, but again, that kind of ties back to that screen size separation. So remember, don't just rely on what you see, but think about what you're tasting, especially when, when things are blind. It's easy to go with your gut and say, okay, this, is, this has great flavor clarity. It's juicy. It's probably washed. I don't see a lot of naturals, although the naturals tend to, do, tend to be there. I found with a natural Bourbon, um, those can also be grown in East Africa, especially Burundi. And uh, those tend to be a little bit more whiny in flavor and in texture. So I would keep that in mind. That's our Bourbon variety. So I'm gonna walk over to these really big seeds here, which are Pacamara variety. Now Pacamara tends to be grown in Central America. I've seen some in Colombia and some in Ecuador. So they tend to be in South America as well, but. Really, I've seen them in Central America, especially El Salvador. Now, Pacamar is really easy to pick out on a table, especially blind, even if you don't know much about coffee variety, and that's just because of the size. So I'll grab one of these just for a comparison. This Pacamar is easily double the size of most coffee varieties. And these are also pretty easy to pick out from a flavor standpoint. Now, when I'm tasting Pacamara, if it's like a lower grown or a uh, processed Pacamara, such as like a washed Pacamara. These are gonna have like kind of like a jalapeno jam thing going on. Um, this one is a washed Pacamara. It tends to have a little bit more flavor clarity. Uh, they could be even venturing into the florals category. Um, the naturals also tend to be a little bit more whiny, but like I said, this one's easiest to pick out from a physical attribute. So if you see that really large seed, it's probably gonna be a Pacamara or a Maragohipe. So keep that in mind. And the next two I have are Ethiopia heirlooms or Ethiopia land race varieties. Now these, especially compared to Pacamara, but overall are gonna be pretty small in size. Now mine tend to be anywhere from size 13, 14 to 15, 16 screen size, which is a lot smaller than what like the Bourbons or the Castillos are. So they're pretty, pretty easy to pick out. They're also pretty easy to identify based on processing. So when you see 
These two are really, really close in size, but a lot of the wash coffees have pretty uh, exposed like mid, and this one is pretty light or pretty dark in color. So that's a natural, and this is a wash. Now they're easy to pick up on a, on a cupping table as well. Ethiopia Land Race and Ethiopia uh, Heirloom varieties tend to have some pretty nice delicate florals, a lot of black tea character, and some, uh, some red fruits if they're processed naturally. So keep that in mind. Um, and these are, like I said, from Ethiopia, so they're pretty easy to pick out. Um, really, really nice varieties. They're kind of mixed, so you will have some like different sizing in here too. So some of them can be quite large and some of them can be quite small. If you find yourself with sort of a mixed bag, that might be uh, Ethiopia heirloom. This one, world famous variety, this is our Gesha variety. Now, this one is really easy to pick out from both a physical attribute as well as a, as a cup profile. Now the cup profile tends to be pretty floral delicate, sort of like those Ethiopian land race, which makes sense, it's from Ethiopia. Um, the physical attributes are dead on. Now they're, they tend to be very long and pointed at the ends. And uh, paired with that, if you cup it and you see that these are elongated and sort of pointed and it's cupping floral, even like whiny, sometimes they can be quite jammy, but the texture will be pretty soft. Um, that's probably a Gesha variety. Now this is sort of a red herring in the physical coffee attributes because this is a pink bourbon and this is a Gesha. So you can see they're quite similar. They're both elongated, they're both pointed at the ends. Pink bourbons tend to have a little bit more variety as far as how they're, how they're shaped. I've noticed a lot of different shapes in a pink bourbon, whereas Geshas tend to be pretty consistent. Now, pink bourbons are more difficult to pick up on the table. They won't be probably as floral, although they can be floral on the cupping table, and the acidity will be quite sharp. Um, sometimes I've, I've cupped Colombian coffees thinking that they're a Kenya, and then I discover that they're a pink bourbon. When they're processed naturally, they'll have more whiny notes, um, a lot more uh, of those big fruits. So keep that in mind when you cup it. Make sure you look at them and compare, compare different varieties. So the next one we have is, uh, is a Katawaii variety. Now Katawaii is gonna be really similar to a uh, Castillo or a Katura in shape. Katawaiis tend to be a little bit more round for me. They're easier to pick out as far as shape because they're pretty consistent. They're gonna be rounds and uh, they're typically low grown Central America. Um, I found a lot of natural Katawaii has been, has been coming out of Costa Rica lately, and those tend to be a little bit more whiny, whereas the washed Katawaiis um, tend to have a little bit lower acidity, they have a medium body, uh, but they'll have like a little bit of a peppery note at times. So they're somewhat easy to pick out as far as, as, far as the wash goes. The naturals might be a little bit more complex, so you might have to lean into uh, to discerning both identifying them on the table using uh, physical attributes, but also from a sensory standpoint. The last one I have is SL28. Now SL28 is pretty easy to pick out if you can find them from a physical standpoint and from a taste standpoint, you probably know that you're gonna be dealing with a Kenya, although a few are grown in Central America. Now the SL28s are also very round, sort of like the Bourbon variety and like the Katawaii variety. Now these have a sharp, high acidity and they tend to have a lot of tropical notes um, and they're, they're pretty juicy and the texture will be medium to high. So I like to, um, I like to identify these using that kind of midriff because it's generally pretty pronounced because they're typically washed, although I do find some naturals in Central America, like I said. So that's all the varieties I have for you today. Remember, when you're doing physical attributes, make sure you're always leading from a sensory standpoint. Sometimes it's really easy for me to look at something, get that in my mind, and then when I'm tasting it, I'm always kind of drawn back to, okay, what did I see, what do I taste? So sometimes it helps to separate those out. 
Um, some advice I have for you as far as the leaderboard challenge goes is to take a lot of notes and really trust your gut. There's a lot of times when I cupped these coffees on season one where I had an idea of what they were and I cupped them again, I went back to my notes, I changed them, and it turns out I was right the first time. So good luck, make sure you, uh, you just trust your gut, take notes, and uh, if you need anything, I'm on Instagram, at Dakota Graph, and uh, yeah, good luck.